Today we revisit the GX era once more with a Season 3 archetype once again. But thankfully this is the semi-final archetype that I have to look at. And that that uh, made its debut in Season 3 and it, hope, and it will probably remain that way forever. So anyway, it's a GX Season 3 archetype uh, and it's the Claudian archetype which was used by Aman Geram and it's actually the first archetype that he used before switching to the Exodia deck that he used fr uh, from then onward. So yeah, and anyway, Claudians are a water uh, fairy based archetype which are also uh, just like Cubics based around uh, uh, spreading counters onto the field. So let's see how they hold up. It's a pretty old archetype. They only got one new card worth of support. So let's see if it's enough to spice them back into the meta relevance. We start off with a level 1 vanilla monster, <laughs> oddly enough, and that is Claudian Smokeball. It's a low water fairy with 200 attack and 600 defense. And it's actually pretty good since, uh, since it's actu actually advisable to run two or three of them due to the fact that one of their effect monsters actually requires it in order to uh, in order for its effects to activate. So yeah, two or three smoke balls are perfectly fine, not to mention that the, it's also searchable with stuff like one for one and unexpected die, so yeah. Next up we have their first effect monster, Cloudy and Sheep Cloud. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, special summon two Claudian tokens, which are fairy type water level 1 with uh, well, the exactly the same stats as Sheep Cloud, in defense position, and these tokens cannot be tributed for a tribute summon unless it's for a Claudian monster. Eh, we'll get to the tribute monster soon, but this uh, part of the effect doesn't quite tickle my fancy. But you could make the argument that it was actually, and this card was actually used for stalling back in the day but uh, now, nowadays it does not serve any form of practical purpose because waiting until you uh, destroy a level 1 monster by battle in order to spread some uh, additional counters or summon some link monster is the, exactly the opposite of applicable here. And not to mention this card kind of get, goes against the logic of the majority of the cards of the archetype which is getting destroyed by battle and uh, summoning stuff in defense mode. We'll get to that, uh, we'll get to why later, but first of all, let's take a look at their final level 1 monster, Claudian Ghost Fog. This is a level 1 Fiend monster for some reason, and this one cannot be special summoned also for some reason. All, all, all battle damage either player takes from battles involving this card becomes zero, and if this card is destroyed by battle, distribute new fog counters equal to the level of the uh, this monster that destroyed it among face up monsters. Okay, so f this is the first card in the archetype that actually does something with fog counters, even though it's still undeniably slow. And you might you might say like you can uh, you can summon it and then ram into it, uh, ram into something and, and then spread some counters around. Well, yeah, you can do that, or you can simply set this guy and pass. But come on, this uh, this ain't no 2005 or in the year before that. It's 2021 almost, so yeah, it's, this card is kind of outdated and it's also a fiend monster for some reason, which also goes against the logic of the deck, so yeah. Uh, if this card was uh, at least special summonable with like 1 for 1, I would have maybe cut it some little slack, but as that is right now, it's not worth running all that much. Their uh, first and only level 3 monster is Claudian Poison Cloud, this is a level 3 with uh, 0 attack and 1000 defense, it's also a fiend type monster for some reason. And when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, if it was face up at the start of the damage step, destroy the monster that destroyed it and if you do, inflict 800 damage to your opponent. Well, it's a worse uh, man-eater bug if I ever saw one. It has to be face up when it gets destroyed by battle, it destroys a monster that destroyed it. Well, as opposed to Man Eater Bug, which can actually destroy any monster when it's flipped face up. And not to mention, well, the burn damage is, again, somewhat insignificant, although 800 is a pretty hefty amount of burn damage. And to give it the faintest bit of credit, it's searchable by Tour Guide for a rank 3 play, and that's about it. So, yeah. And Claudians are not primarily known for their rank 3s, so you should probably avoid this one. 
And now we move on to the level 4 lineup, which are actually the best uh, things Claudians have to offer. First of which we have Claudian Cirostratus, which is uh, level 4 with 900 attack and 0 defense. Fairy, thank god. And this card cannot be destroyed by battle. If this card is in face-up defense position, destroy it. When you normal summon this card, place one fog counter on each Claudian monster on the field. You can remove two fog counters from this card and destroy one card, uh, one monster on the field. Okay, so the first uh, part of the effect that it that it cannot be destroyed by battle and blows up in defense position is a part of the effect that it's shared among all uh, Claudian monsters that are coming up right now. And the normal summon placing one counter for each Claudian monster on the field is shared among two, two of the following cards that are basically uh, coming up uh, quite soon. And, well, the, mo the monster effect removal for two fog counters that is not even limited to once per turn was pretty damn sick when this thing came out. So, yeah, it's actually a quite good card. Uh, it would be an honor, uh, an order to take a look at their following card, which is Acid Cloud, which has the exact same uh, effects as uh, Zero Stratus, but uh, its only different thing is that two fog counters removed uh, destroy a spell or trap card. And Altus is another level 4 with 1300 attack, and it's a unique effect is that it uh, requires to remove 3 counters, but from anywhere on the field, to randomly discard uh, one card from your opponent's hand. This was basically the Claudian trio that basically uh, saw the most competitive play and was pretty damn versatile when it came to removal simply because uh, their spell card that generates counters the easiest was actually uh, quite right when it came to uh, the versatility it was supposed to offer but nowadays it's not the most consistent way of generating counters so you might want to cut down on these guys, but yeah, these are these are basically the heart and soul of the mm, of the most basic basic Claudian build, and their removal effects. Well, given the fact that none of these are once per turn, can actually be pretty damn useful, especially if you have some extra counters to spare. So yeah, a monster you definitely want to pay attention to nowadays is Claudian Turbulence. It's a it's another level four has the standard Claudian effects and when you normal summon this card you can place one fog counter for each Claudian monster on the field and you can remove one fog counter from this card to special summon one Claudian smoke ball from your deck uh, from your deck or either player's graveyard so essentially it's a very nice uh, resource generating machine and not to mention if there are uh, actually uh, sufficient uh, uh, sufficient uh, number of counters on the field and if you and sufficient uh, number of Claudian monsters when you summon this thing, you can pretty much turn this uh, and turn this thing into an extra link spam machine, especially if you have smoke balls to spare. And uh, it's it, it's a shame that it uh, does not summon smoke balls from the hand because that would be uh, that would be a bit uh, better because smoke balls can actually clog up your hand quite easily so you're forced to run stuff like magical mallet in order to send them back into the deck to get some other cards instead of them but turbulence is not bad by any means and is always a three off staple in the in claudians because the amount of advantage it can give and give you is pretty damn uh, impressive so yeah next up we have their final level four which is claudian storm dragon this card cannot be normal summoned or set, and this card can only be special summoned by removing from play one Claudian monster from your graveyard. This card cannot be destroyed by battle, and yeah, this the, the has the standard Claudian effects, and once per turn you can place one fog counter on one monster on the field. It's... Uh, I, I only have the problem with this card that in the fact that it cannot be normal summoned, uh, because if you draw into three of these on your first turn, it can be a very nasty uh, first turn brick, and uh, forcing you to uh, s put stuff into the graveyard prematurely just to be able to summon some of these. But the, um, but the amount of utility it offers is so good that it's basically worth, uh, worth being a 3 of staple since once per turn placing one counter on the field can actually do wonders for the deck and not to mention can fuel some uh, r disruption and removal effects for one of the previous monsters we've mentioned. So yeah, it's a definitely good card. And now we move on to their tribute monsters, first of which we have their first and only level 5, Claudian Nimbus Man. 
This is a level 5 with 1000 attack and defense and it has the standard Claudian effect and you can tribute any number of water monsters for the tribute summon of this card. And when this card is tribute summon, place one fog counter on it for each water monster you tributed. And if the, this card gains 500 attack for each fog counter on the field. Uh, essentially this is actually their better tribute monster due to the fact that it mm, building decks around this card usually uh, results in this guy hitting the field with a good uh, with a good 20,000 to 10,000 plus uh, damage because uh, if, if you actually have a sufficient way of generating counters on the field and not to mention if you have uh, lots of water monsters with barely any counters on them and if you happen to well uh, so tribute to the five water monsters you basically uh, uh, have a 3500 attack beat stick right off the bat so yeah uh, nowadays this play is not nearly as impressive as it used to be hell it was a bit too slow when the kite came out so yeah it's if you desire to build a somewhat fun uh, Nimbus Man OTK deck you just basically have to run a bunch of water monsters which can easily special summon themselves along with the running stuff which can get generate counters easier which is one, one of their spell cards, uh, well their newest spell card that they got recently and some other stuff as well so yeah but in, a, in any competitive build Claudian Nimbus Man is not worth running what is definitely not worth running is their final monster Claudian Eye of the Typhoon it's a wind aqua type monster for whatever reason and this card cannot uh, no, well this card has the s s uh, exact same uh, Claudian effects standard uh, Claudian effects as all the other monsters and when this card declares an attack change the battle positions of all face up monsters except Claudian monsters um yeah this card actually appeared on my top 10 worst archetype support cards video for a uh, very good reason First of all, it's a wind monster in an archetype dominated by water monsters, so that's a bit of an imbecilic uh, thing there. It's also an aqua type monster for another very stupid reason, because, uh, well, uh, the Claudians were usually uh, played alongside Valha Valhalla and the uh, Sanctuary in the Sky to prevent battle damage, since they constantly have to remain in attack position, they cannot be destroyed by battle. So this thing basically eliminates that benefit, so... Yeah, and not to mention the battle position... Uh, it is actually the non-targeting battle position changing, but... It's absolutely pointless because... Again, most of the stuff here doesn't uh, tend to be able to switch to attack position due to... Ma uh, due to Master Rule 4, but nowadays, uh, but nowadays in Master Rule 5 it's a bit more useful as it can basically help you clear out some bigger beat sticks by switching them to defense position but you in in return you you save your opponent from taking battle damage and not to mention that Claudians have way more consistent ways of non battle removal in order to uh, destroy something and you know, clear the field to uh, to basically inflict some massive damage so yeah unless you're doing something funny with like I don't know uh, trade in as for draw power, I would avoid this one because it's basically a, 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 a bricky boss monster that's not worth running at all. And now we move on to their spell and trap line, and first of which we have Claudian Squall. It's a continuous spell that says during each of your standby phases, place one fog counter on every face-up monster. Yeah, this was th this is still one of the better ways to spread uh, fog counters, even though it's so undeniably slow that it hurts. What definitely helps is that you basically need to run three of them and have all three of them present uh, on the field in order to have three face up, uh, uh, three uh, fog counters placed on each monster every turn. So yeah, I would have appreciated if they retrained this card as, uh, with to give it some additional protection effects or any other stuff which will make it uh, spawn more utility for the archetype because that is it is right now. It's uh, slow, but you gotta play it. You know how that uh, that goes with some of the older cards. Yeah, so run three. Yeah, and now we move on to their uh, newest uh, spell card that they got, Claudian Aerosol. 
It allows you to discard one Claudian monster to target a face-up monster on the f field and place four counters on that mon target equal to its level. And you can banish discarded one Claudian monster from your graveyard to special summon a Claudian monster from your deck. And you can only use one Claudian aerosol effect per turn and only once that turn. It requires a discard, which uh, which is kind of niche in my opinion, but it can actually help out if you have a, a storm dragon in your hand and you need to summon it to provide an additional counter. And not to mention that you can also banish a monster from the graveyard, the one, also the one you uh, discarded, in order to special summon for a, a Claudian monster from the deck, which is always appreciated. However, the thing that annoys me here that is that the effects cannot be used uh, in the same turn. So that is something you gotta watch out for, while overall this card is a very welcome addition to the deck, so yeah, run two or three of them. Next up we have a quick play spell, Fog Control. Tribute a face-up Claudian monster you control to place three fog counters on one face-up monster. Ah, he just don't. Aerosol is a much better card, and even though this card has some niche uses in order to like quickly boost up a... Uh, uh, Nimbus Man for 1500 uh, attack points. It does not matter all that much, but if you do run it, it's probably not more than one. N and next up, we have their final quick play spell Diamond Dust Cyclone. It allows you to select a monster with four or more fog counters, destroy it, and then draw one card for every four counters that were on it. A uh, potentially useful effect, but the amount of setup it requires makes it barely worth running, so you might as well run stuff like Upsur Goblin or Reckless Greed if you want some additional draw power. As much as Moray of Greed, which is basically a tree of staple in Claudian, so yeah, and it also helps out with uh, uh, sending smoke balls back into the deck, so yeah. Next up we have the, the continuous spell Summon Cloud. Once per turn during your main phase, if you don't control any monsters, you can special summon one level 4 or lower Claudian monster from your hand or from either player's graveyard. And if you special summon a monster from the graveyard with this effect, destroy this card. Or you can not be a complete dumbass and just run Valhalla instead. How handy. Next up we have Lucky Cloud, which is their final spell card. And during the end phase, if you summon two or more Claudian monsters with the same name this turn, draw two cards. Well, it's better, it's somewhat better than Diamond Dust Cyclone, but again, summoning two Claudians with the same name doesn't all happen, uh, tend to happen all that much, unless you summon two Smoke Balls with the effect of uh, Turbulence. And not to mention the plus happens during the end phase, so much like Diamond Dust Cyclone, this one's not worth running. And now we move on to their uh, trap lineup, first of which we have Raging Claudian. Activate only when a Claudian monster you control is uh, destroyed by its own effect and sent to the graveyard. Special summon one of those monsters from your graveyard in attack position and place one fog counter on it. It cannot be changed to defense position by a card effect. Um, okay, so this is suddenly a thing. I mean, this would be useful if they actually designed the archetype to, like, uh revolve around their defense position destruction effect, but the archetype is clearly not, not meant to be played by this uh, this way, and the only thing you get is one measly little counter and the fact uh, that uh, the opponent uh, cannot change it to defense position via card effect, uh, and so yeah, you cannot uh, use that all-powerful staple card Earthquake in order to disrupt your plays, so yeah, this one is not worth running at all. Next up we have Updraft, which allows you to remove all counters from the field to inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each counter you remove. Yes, this is indeed another token GX era burn card, which absolutely has nothing to do with the archetype, and you might as well not uh, run this thing because the burn damage is completely insignificant, so let's just move on. Next up we have a continuous trap, Natural Disaster. Inflict 500 damage to your opponent each time a card they control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard by the effect of a Claudian monster. Um, yeah, it's the, you only, the only uh, cards that actually destroy something uh, by card effects are Poison Cloud, which is not worth running, uh, Acid Cloud and, uh, and Cirrostratus, which are worth running, but their, uh, but their effects are going to basically activate very infrequently so if uh, so this thing is really not worth running 
And our final card, which is really not worth running, is Rainstorm. It allows you to select a Claudian monster you control and reduce that man monster's attack by 1,000 or 2,000 points and apply the appropriate effect by um, and apply the appropriate effect. If reduced by 1,000 points, it allows you to destroy one spell or trap your opponent controls, and if 2,000 points, it allows you to destroy two spell or traps your opponent controls. Or you cannot be a complete idiot once again and just run MST and Twin Twister instead. And that's about it. None, this is definitely not worth running. As any, uh, as, as of all Claudian monsters have all the cards worth running, mind you, have below 1000 attack points. So, yeah. This also goes against the logic of the deck. So, yeah. And now we move on to the grading scale. In terms of consistency, they have access to quite a lot of things which can basically prop them up when they need to. Their own archetypal consistency is not too amazing, uh, other than uh, Turbulent summoning smoke balls from the deck, but the generic fairy type support and stuff like Valhalla can definitely help out here, so it's a definite 2 out of 3 here. In terms of power, their only consistent power output is within the tribute monsters, which are not worth competitively running, or not worth running at all, so it's a complete 1 out of 3. When it comes to comeback ability, once you manage to lock out, uh, lock them out from doing anything, or have some, uh, have something like w which permanently switches stuff to defense mode, like uh, all, all ultimate conductor Tarano or uh, um, Buster Dragon the Dragon the Buster uh, Buster Blader the Dragon Destruction Swordsman, you did pretty much game over, and not to mention. As soon as they start losing advantage, there's pretty much no way to get it back, so that's a complete 1 out of 3 in my opinion. And also, as for the protection, it's not much, but the fact that they uh, ha have such a, a form of protection that they do right now, especially in the time of their release, is good enough for me to give it a 2 out of 3. However, in terms of the versatility department, I will give them a very generous 3 out of 3 due to the fact that they have access to quite a lot of things, which include Sanctuary in the Sky builds, Valhalla Hecatris, Arclord Christia, Bahamut Shark, totally awesome. They really have uh, ways to ab abuse their uh, ma massive swarming and basically uh, become an extra deck vomit machine. Uh, especially when it comes to the duology of Bahamuchuk are totally awesome. The latter of which is now, as of uh, the release of the new ban list, now fully unlimited, so you can go wild with it. So, yeah. Claudians uh, are a fairly interesting type of deck because they actually uh, require some niche intricate skill when it comes to p piloting, and while I personally wasn't uh, all that good with piloting Claudians, there is certainly somebody out there who can basically uh, give me a full rundown on how the archetype can and will function. So yeah, it's a form. It's also a formidable uh, link uh, link spam deck with the uh, effect of turbulence, which is always appreciated. And yeah, if the archetype receives some new support, I'll be very interesting to see it because uh, this archetype is uh, is quite interesting in their own regard but until then we have another 5d's era archetype to the to dissect and in fact that archetype is quite special in its own way so yeah uh, looking forward to reviewing them next so thank you all so much for watching stay tuned for more videos and updates comment like and subscribe as usual i'll upload the next video whenever i can be sure to check out my patreon when you got the time maybe drop a few donations if you feel like it and as usual, see you all and have a good day. Peace.